Okay, welcome to part three, I think, of this tutorial. In this video, we are going to be finishing off the API page and hopefully moving on to the test uh, site and the API interface. So what we need to do uh, to finish off this API page is code this block here and test it with this form and then delete that form because we're not going to be using a form to submit the data. Um, so inside this block we want to do the same error checks that we did on the sort of add page, the shorten page for the shorten tutorial. Um, we also want to check if the number of API requests for the given IP address is greater than a thousand because that's the limit we're going to be setting for um, shortens anyway. Um, if it's not, we want to shorten the URL. So let's define an errors array as we did before as an empty array and then let's do some checks. The first check we're going to do is if the um, the number of shortenings today which we did using the silly function, silly function name, get today's API requests uh, and then we're going to pass that the server variable or server variable element remote address, short for, short for address anyway. And if that is greater than 1000, we're going to show, well, we're not going to show, we're going to add an error. Um, this server variable contains, is a super global variable like get post cookie session, you know, all the others. Um, the server variable though contains static information about the server, um, so well, not the server, this sort of PHP environment kind of anyway. Um, I, I believe we used it previously to get the um, URL of a script or get the name of a script um, and we're using it here. This contains the IP address of the user browsing the, um, the website or in this case it'll contain the IP address of the device um, system making a request to our API. So what we are going to do um, if this, well yeah, so what we're going to do if this function returns more than a thousand, as in they've just gone over a thousand, um, is add something to the errors array, which is a string. I'm just going to say something alike, sort of like a nice error message. Let's think of one. Um, you have um, used no, you have exceeded. There we go. Exceeded the limit, the limit for the free API. Because obviously, you could have like a paid version of the API with an unlimited number of things. Um, so let's just uh, okay. That's that check. The only new one. The other two are from the um, shortened page. Uh, I'm just going to do them again here. If string length of the um, thing they posted to us shorten is greater than 1024 errors equals um, there is a limit of 1024 characters that's that, that's that one done and then this is going to be the filter var check I explain these in the um, what's it called, the other tutorial, the URL shortening site tutorial, so if you don't know what I'm doing you should probably go and watch that because I'm not going to go over them in too much detail here other than to say that's checking the string length and this is checking the validid validid validity that sounds wrong validity, there we go <laughs> of the URL ish, because as you may have noticed and as I have pointed out a few times it's not always that good but just for this we're going to be using this function Filter validate validate URL. If that's equal to false, we are going to aggressive typing. Errors equals oh dear. Um, your URL does not appear to be valid. There we go. So there are the three error messages will be error messages that will be returning. So what we want to do next is um, 
actually shorten the URL and get the key only though if none of these errors have occurred. So we can do that by checking if the errors array is still empty. Um, if it is, we are going to um, just sort of set the key to false, like return false as the key. And if it's not, we are going to shorten the URL and set the result of that as the key. Uh, so we're going to find this new key variable. Uh, if I learn to spell. So I'm going to set key equal to um, ternary operator empty errors and if the errors array is empty no yeah if it is empty that means nothing's gone wrong so we're going to use the shorten url function on the post url no not on the post shorten um, remember from the previous tutorial this will shorten the url it will insert it into the database and it will return the key that can be used to access it uh, and also they'll be able to look up that key using the above method anyway um, if not we're just going to set that equal to false to indicate a failure um, so now we just need to output the JSON encoded array so let's echo JSON encode array without that and we're going to uh, to give three elements in this array. The first one is the URL, which is the URL they entered. So post shorten. The second one is the key, which is the result of either false or the result of the shortening function, which we find in either of those will be in the key variable. And then finally the errors array, which is going to be just the errors array. Just fix these so they look neat, like so. And then in this function, the final thing we need to do is log an API request, which we made the function for called log API request. And that took the IP address again, which is server remote address, like so. So now this should be ready for a quick test. If I change this down here to shorten, so I'll be submitting the shorten post variable and reload our page. Uh, well, I'll reload it like that. So we get back to this help information. And if I try and shorten google.com com com and hit test, you see we get a huge mess because I've spelled validate wrong, I think. Yes. Validate. So let's reload our page. And now we get this uh, different result, which is URL. Uh, basically, this is another array. Um, well, it's yeah, it's that JSON encoded. So we have three elements. The first one is this. The second one is this, and the final one is this errors array here. Um, so the URL is this. Again, this escaping is something we don't need to worry about. Um, the key is 1, that's what we entered, and this errors array is an empty array. Square brackets denote an array, as in, um, like, curly brackets are an object, square means array. Um, these are usually used when you have, like, a auto-incrementing key. So, well, let's call some errors. Let's enter an, in oops, let's enter an invalid um, URL. Let's just enter HTTP. Hit test. You see now we get this errors array, square brackets, something in the square brackets in quotes um, this would be like a comma separated list like you would have like this and then a comma and then another string um, and when you decode this you'll basically get back to this information here so that's the end of the API page um, so yes the last thing we need to do is just remove this testing form that we had at the bottom so now if we go back to a page and reload this you see we just get this um, actually, we should send the appropriate header because this is a JSON string. We should uh, send the content type for JSON. At the moment, we're sending text slash HTML, which is incorrect. So we're going to do that just after the um, because all of these conditions output JSON sort of text. We are going to be always sending it, so we can send the header at the top of the file here. And we'll do it just using the header function. Um, and we're just going to send content type. 
application slash json which is the sort of type for json strings i'll reload this now so we get a download because firefox doesn't show um, json strings in the browser window which is why i added that at the end okay so that's it for our api now um, just browse our um, relog in and browse our api log is we have well two requests we sh I shortened the extra URL it was one previously uh, URLs we have this so that's it for the um, things we're going to be working with directly in the URL shortening folder shortening site folder um, the other site folder contains this API interface obviously that would be like I said I think I said before that would normally be a download on your site it wouldn't be like developed directly in this folder because this is someone else's domain you don't have control over this but uh, basically th at the moment this is, this is a blank file and this test page which is going to be using this interface as a few little examples of how it works once it's finished is going to be well at the moment it's a simple HTML template and it's going to contain a bit of PHP code just to demonstrate the result of this function and to test it out as we go along and correct any mistakes I make Okay, so I think I'm going to end this here because there's not many minutes left and it'd be nice to actually finish a file at the end of a video for once. Okay, so thank you for watching and join me in part whatever the next part is for when we'll be creating the API interface file and testing it out.